Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is review. Review what went well in the last time that you did your planning session, the last time you researched, the last time you reached out to guests. What worked? Were there things that you felt really worked well, but then others that you felt, "Mm, you know what, I could probably improve on this? That's where you're going to want to focus is what are those things that you can do to do better next time? One thing that I noticed is that when I record, I had one time where I had the wrong microphone selected. So the first five minutes of the episode were not great audio quality because I didn't have it going directly from my microphone. So that's something that I would want to put into my checklist as don't forget (laughs) to make sure that the right microphone is selected. Welcome to another episode of Listeners to Leads, where I'm helping podcasters launch and maintain a lead generating show. I'm your host, Alicia Galati, the CEO and head podcast strategist behind Galati Media, a full service podcast management company. On this show, you'll hear my guests and I discuss everything it takes to launch a successful podcast and keep it running. If you're ready to get leads, land speaking gigs, and create deeper connections with your audience through your podcast, then this is the show for you. As a podcaster, the stats are not in your favor that you will be continuing to podcast for a long time. Most of the time, when people start launching a podcast, they kind of just rush into it, which is one reason why I'm always saying don't launch your podcast in 14 days. You want to make sure that you are giving your audience time to get to know that you're having a podcast. You want to give your audience time to know that they can give input on what your podcast is going to be about. And you don't just want to rush into it. That's why most podcasts don't make it past seven episodes. So we don't want that for you. So today we're going to talk about how to streamline your content creation process specifically for your podcast. So there are a few things that you can do in the plan and create phase that we're going to talk about. And then toward the end, because my background's in manufacturing and supply chain and operations, so I'm all about having your processes in place, make sure you're reviewing them, improving them, optimizing them, all that incredible stuff. So that's what we're going to talk about today. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna have a planning session. This is going to help you streamline your process and take one hour, two hours, four hours, however long it is going to take you to plan out at least one month's worth of content. If you don't plan out your content, you're going to feel like you're trying to run down a hill. You keep going and the momentum just keeps going and going and the next thing you know, you're crashing and rolling and We don't want that for you, right? (laughs) We want you to be able to create content that feels good, that is going to be beneficial for your audience instead of feeling like you're constantly on a hamster wheel trying to just get the next thing. Take that time, focus on what your audience wants, ask them questions. And if you know you're gonna have a guest on, then what kind of questions do they have for that guest? So that will help you also with creating content with the guest. But Take that time to plan. Don't record during that planning session. This is literally just you getting in and brainstorming it all out. What do you want your audience to be able to take away from your episodes? And how do you want to show up in your space? So that's why those planning sessions are so, so, so important. During that planning session, you're also going to do any research that you need to do. If you have a potential guest that you want to have on, or if that's your time that you take to review people who have pitched to be on your podcast, that's where you're going to want to be able to do that as you're planning it out. Now, I have some clients where they plan out three, four months in advance. And so when people pitch them, they're usually looking at, all right, what is this person going to be able to offer my audience in three or four months? I like that strategy a lot. I personally work in about like a one to two month range. That's just, that's how I work best. That's where I like to work in that space. It's really up to you. But if you at least do one month, you'll be ahead of the curve already because you'll have those, you know, however many episodes for that month planned out and ready to go. We could talk about 
how to come up with content for your podcast, but I don't want to talk about that during this episode since we're talking specifically about streamlining your process. Definitely look out for a later episode where we will be talking about how to come up with content for your podcast and ideas to help with that. We have lots of ideas over here. The next thing you're going to do once you've planned out all your episodes, and this does not have to be on the same day, I actually don't recommend that it's on the same day. Have that quiet time to plan, and then the next time that you do have that space, block it off on your calendar to record. Now, I want you to batch record. This is going to help if you get sick or if something happens, you are able to still create great vocal content for your audience without having to worry about getting sick or anything like that. Another reason to batch record is so that you kind of have the flow. I do notice though, when clients over batch record, I had one client last year where she batch recorded three months worth of content in about two or three weeks. Then she had three months off, which is great. But then once that end of the three months came back, she's like, what am I doing? (laughs) She didn't have any processes in place. She didn't have any strategy. And it felt really overwhelming to get back into her podcast. Thankfully, she has someone like me to be able to jump in and support her on that. But if you don't have someone like me in your corner, being able to help you plan out that content, then you're definitely going to want to have that time to batch record and not feel overwhelmed. So don't batch record too far ahead if you can. The next thing you're going to want to make sure that you do as you are creating the content and planning the content is have proper documentation, even if it's just you. So if you are a solopreneur or a single person who's just like, this is your thing, you have this podcast, you don't have a team of people helping you, I still recommend that you have some type of step-by-step process of what you do and in what order. Now, this is going to help you be able to eliminate distractions because when you leave it up for, well, what do I need to do next? Then your brain starts moving to other things. Next thing you know, you've got your phone open, you're looking on Instagram. At that point, you're just opening yourself up to all of the possible distractions that you can let in. And we don't really need that. Let's not be distracted. Having that proper documentation is going to be key in that. What I recommend you have on there is just a step-by-step. If you're not someone who works well with full written out descriptions, then maybe you do just a check-by-check checklist of, all right, first, make sure that I have my recording on. Make sure that I plan out four episodes. Episode one, check. Episode two, check. And then once you get to the production side, then you can have a checklist for that. But right now we're just talking about that initial planning and creating your podcast content. Another thing that I love to do is to have templates. If you have an intro or you have something that you say every single episode, record it once and then let it go every time. Just have that separate file so that way you don't have to spend extra time trying to remember to record something or you get annoyed because You feel like you're repeating yourself over and over again. We don't want that. That's going to be the other thing is making sure that you have those templates. I obviously don't have to tell you about those (laughs) template graphics. Make sure that you have those as well. But right now we're just talking about that planning and creating side. So we're not going to talk about that. But please do have that. (laughs) How can you do better during your next podcast content creation session? You've worked to streamline your process. You've kind of got that plan laid out for you. What are some strategies that you can use to then do better the next time? Because obviously, unless you have a limited series, you're going to be recording again and coming up with new content. So this is going to help you do that. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is review. Review what went well in the last time that you did your planning session, the last time you researched, the last time you reached out to guests. What worked? Were there things that you felt really worked well, but then others that you felt, "Mm, you know what, I could probably improve on this? That's where you're going to want to focus is what are those things that you can do to do better next time? One thing that I noticed is that when I record, I had one time where I had the wrong microphone selected. So the first five minutes of the episode were not great audio quality. 
because I didn't have it going directly from my microphone. So that's something that I would want to put into my checklist as don't forget (laughs) to make sure that the right microphone is selected. Or maybe I get feedback from my audience saying that they don't like side tangents and stories. And so I try to make sure that I keep those to a minimum. Or maybe I find that I'm having a really hard time coming up with content. So I'm going to ask my audience what kind of content they want to hear about. And that will then allow me to create content that is directly going to impact their lives, impact their podcasts, and allow them to do and be better. So review what you've done. Where can you improve? Make those improvements, or at least add them to your checklist so that you know and note them the next time that you record. The next thing you're going to want to do is automate where you can. So like I said before, where you have those templates, whether it's your intro, your outro, maybe you use a project management tool to manage your and plan out your sessions. That's what I do. I use ClickUp to plan out my episodes. I have a document in ClickUp that has a list of a ton of episode ideas, and then I use that to then decide, all right, what are we going to talk about in the next month? Now, one way that you can automate things is I have templates within my ClickUp tasks that allow me to then have a checklist for every episode. So when an episode needs to go live or when I create a new episode in ClickUp, I have a subtask list that is automatically created where it comes in with planning, guest management, recording, audio editing, video editing, copy, graphics, review, uploading to Buzzsprout, which is our host of choice, uploading to the website host, uploading to the video host, and then schedule all the marketing. Now that's quite a list of things that need to get done. There are different people that need to do it. Obviously I have a team that's helping me do this, but when it was just me doing my podcast, I still had a checklist very similar where it had all of those things minus the video aspect because I I don't mess with video. (laughs) If I can help it, I try not to mess with video. I was doing all of this myself. So I still had it listed out as, all right, what needs to happen? In the planning, I've got plan an outline and then plan questions if applicable. Under guest management, I've got secure the guest, book the guest, disclosure form for the guest, get the guest information, guest interview, reminder and details, make sure that that goes out and then let them know when their episode goes live. Under recording, I've got don't forget to hit record. Don't forget to record separate track for each speaker, record episode and then upload it to Google folder. This is what I'm talking about where it's that step-by-step process. But I have this automated where every time I say, hey, this is an episode idea and I'm gonna do an episode on it, that checklist is already ready to go. And the automation is set up that when I create that new episode, that checklist automatically attaches itself. So that's what I mean where I say automate where you can so that you don't forget to do things in your process. It's gonna help you streamline it, make it easier, work quicker, more efficiently, so that you're not scrambling around trying to figure out what did I need to do next? The next thing you're gonna wanna do and how to do and be better next time that you are to streamline your podcast content creation process is by optimizing your time. There are a few ways to make sure that you make the most of your time. We're gonna have an episode in a month or two with one of our clients, she's incredible. And she's gonna be talking about how she streamlines her process. She's also a productivity and time management coach. So we're gonna dive into all that stuff with her. But just some quick tips that you can use. Block off time on your Google Calendar or whatever calendar you're using to ensure that you are making the most of your time and you know that you have it scheduled and you hold yourself accountable to take action. That's gonna be the first thing. Next thing to optimize your time is to ensure that you are in a space where it makes the most sense for you to plan and to record. So for me, I can do my planning sessions late at night when the kids are asleep. For some reason, my walls are really thin in my house and so (laughs) I can hear everything in the house. I mean, it's not a huge house, but it's decent. I'm at one end and usually the boys are at the other end doing schoolwork with my husband and I can hear them. For me, when they're asleep, that's when that brain space works best, is when I have the house to myself. I don't have to worry about 
all of the other voices out there in the hallway or anything like that. So for me, evenings work really well for planning. But when I want to record, by the end of the day, I don't really want to. (laughs) I don't really want to sit down and record or take the space to do that. I'd rather be in planning mode or listening to music mode by the end of the day. When works best for me to record is when my husband takes the boys to their speech sessions. That works because then the house is quiet. It's that morning, like late morning time. And I know that I have this block of time to get a certain amount of work done. That's what I mean when I say Make sure that you are optimizing your time. Use simple time management skills to ensure that you get your podcast recorded, you plan it out, you do all that stuff. Now, one thing about marketing and about operations, when you do review things to see where you can improve, you implement them. So I wanna say, find one or two things that you can improve in your process and implement them. Then run with that for a month or two come back, listen to this episode if you want, or just say, look, this is where I can improve next. Review it, look over it. Maybe you fell off the wagon on one thing where you're kind of skimping on giving a lot of effort in that area. That's where you wanna be able to say, all right, reel it back in. (laughs) We're gonna go, we're gonna do this thing. It's gonna be great. Review it, make your changes, implement them, and then repeat that process. Let me know if you have any questions about streamlining your podcast content and if you have any ideas for future podcasts. Obviously, I love to hang out on Instagram and I would love to know if you guys have any suggestions on episodes or where you personally are finding ways to streamline your podcast content creation process. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Listeners to Leads. If you found something in this episode valuable, I would really appreciate it if you shared it with a friend who you know would also get value from it. Want to send me a message? My favorite place to hang out is Instagram. You can find me at alicia.lotti. Let me know what your favorite takeaway was from the episode. And don't forget, turning those listeners into leads is actually easy.